Hey everyone, and welcome to part one of the Ruby Motion for Rails developers course. This is episode one. Hello, Ruby Motion. By the end of this episode, you will have created your first Ruby Motion application. You will get to understand the basics of the entry point to an iOS application called the Application Delegate, how to display things on screen, and of course, how to run your application in the simulator or on your device if you've set that up. Before we start writing code, you need to first generate your application. This is done using the motion tool in your terminal. The main use for the motion tool is to generate your application. You will see soon how rake is used for most everything else when working with RubyMotion. The motion command is very simple, and if you've worked with Ruby on Rails before, it should be a very familiar style of generating a project. It's simply motion create, followed by the name of your application, and then the template you would like to use. As of this recording, RubyMotion supports two different platform templates in the stable version, which are iOS and OS X. But if you're using the beta version, or possibly the stable version by the time you're watching this, you will also be able to choose to select the Android platform template. You can also use third party templates, but for now, I'm going to only focus on the iOS platform template, which is actually the default template, so you won't even need to specify the template unless you wish to use a different one. When you run this command, it will create a new folder with the name of your application for you, filled with a few different files. Let's quickly take a look at these. The rake file is where you put all the configuration settings for your application, like its name and its identifier for the App Store. It also contains all the default tasks to build, run, and test your application. The gem file is like any gem file in a Ruby application. This is where you specify which gems your application will use. Keep in mind that a gem has to be prepared to work with RubyMotion. This is because unlike other Ruby implementations, RubyMotion is compiled, and so is given a list of files, which it then compiles and bundles together. You can't just require any gem or Ruby file in your RubyMotion app. You'll realize how little that matters soon though, because there is a bunch of RubyMotion specific gems on motion-toolbox.com. And most normal Ruby gems actually just wouldn't make sense in a Ruby Motion app. Continuing with the list of files, the motion tool also generates a basic .gitignore file, which contains all the common file patterns that you would want Git to ignore. In a Ruby Motion project, by default, all the Ruby files inside the app folder will get added to the list of files to be compiled. So all your source code will go in here. There is already a file in here that the motion tool created for us called app delegate, which you will be learning about in just a moment. The resources directory is where you put things like images, videos, sounds, and fonts that you want to use inside of your application. There is some specially named images, which will be picked up by iOS and used as your app's icon and launch image. The file in there already is a blank solid black image that will be used as the launch image for your iPhone 5. RubyMotion comes with a built-in testing framework called MacBacon, which is based off Bacon, but is written to work with iOS. Bacon is a lightweight version of RSpec. I won't be covering testing in this course, but I do have existing episodes on testing and testing may be covered in depth during a future course. If you decide to use MacBacon, your specs are stored inside of the spec directory. With all that out of the way, it's time to start working on this Hello Ruby Motion app. Get your terminal and favorite editor ready and put your coding hat on. It's time for a demo. In your terminal, Navigate to the directory where you want to store your RubyMotion app. Then run the motion create command, naming your application hello 
underscore Ruby Motion. Remember that because iOS is the default template, you don't need to specify what template to use. Now it's time to open up the project in your favorite editor. Throughout this course, I'll be using Vim. There is only one file currently in our application, the app delegate file. So let's open this up and take a look. This is a pretty simple class, but it's extremely important. When your application begins launching, iOS is going to search around for this class so that it can let it know. It's the central communication channel between your app's code and iOS, as well as the launching point for setting up your application when it launches. In this class, there is a method called application did finish launching with options. The part that looks kind of like a name parameter is actually part of the method name. I'll explain this shortly though. Let's focus on the body of this method. At the moment, this method simply returns true. It has to do this to let iOS know that the application launched without any issues. Basically just leave that true there and ignore it. Let's make this app do something though. The first thing we need to do is create a canvas to start putting our UI on. In iOS, this is called a window. This line of code is usually the same for every iOS app unless you're doing something super tricky. First, you need to create a window. You do this by calling alloc, then a knit with frame on the UI window class. This is how you sometimes need to create an object. First by allocating the memory, and then by initializing it with some initial values. It's weird to see it first, but you get used to it pretty quickly. This initializer takes a parameter that tells the window how big it should be. Of course, we want it to be able to put our UI anywhere on the screen. So you can use the UI screen class to get the bounds of the main screen, which is just the size of the device's screen. You have a window to add your UI elements to now, but if you tried to run this, the window wouldn't actually display, regardless of if it had something on it or not. To make it display, you need to call a method on it called make key and visible. This says to make this the window that is the focus of the user input, as well as make it visible on the screen. It's unlikely you will ever use multiple windows. This is just there to tell the system what window is going to be used. Now you're ready to start putting something on the canvas that is your window. Let's start by displaying the text Hello Ruby Motion on the screen and a red square. Between these two lines you wrote, you're going to first create a new instance of a UI label, which is the main way of showing text on the screen. After creating the label, you need to configure how it will look. First set the text attribute to be Hello Ruby Motion, and then set the frame, which is the combination of both the position and size on the screen. I'm gonna make this label sit 100 pixels from the top of the screen, 20 points from the left, and be 280 pixels wide and 30 pixels tall. Now with all those attributes set to describe how it will display on the screen, all that's left to do is to add it to the window using the add subview method. Let's do this all again, but this time for a red square. To do this, you'll need to create a new instance of UI view. UI view is the base class for all of the UI elements you will work with. You simply just call all these things views. A plain UI view doesn't really do much, but it does have some of the basic attributes that all views have, which the important ones for us right now are the frame and the background color. So let's set those. Set the frame like you did with the label, but this time let's place it just below the label. It's going to be 150 pixels from the top of the screen and 135 pixels from the left. The width and height of the square is going to be 50 pixels. Now for the background color. To set this property, you have to use the UI color class, which is a special class 
used to represent colors when working with UIKit. The framework that contains all these UI focus classes like UI Label, UI Window, and UI View. UI Color does have methods on it to create colors from red, green, and blue values, but it also has some basic named colors that are just methods on it, such as the red color method. That's the red square configured, so just add this to the window like you did with the label. The last thing you should do is set the background color of the window itself. Because UI window is actually a subclass of UI view, you can set the background color just like you can with any UI view subclass, such as UI label. Let's set the background color of the window to just be a gray color. That's everything you need to get the result you see here in the screenshot of the app. But before I show you how to run the app in the simulator, I want to take a second to explain a weird feature of RubyMotion when it comes to method names. Because RubyMotion has to work with everything that Objective-C does, and because Objective-C supports method overloading, RubyMotion has to as well. If you haven't seen method overloading before, the basic idea in RubyMotion is that you can actually define a method multiple times and it will be, in fact, a completely different method from the original, as long as it has different names for its parameters. In this example, there is two methods, both called insert. Because they both have two different named parameters, they are totally different methods. The first is actually called insert colon before index colon. And the second is called insert colon after index colon. The parameters actually make up part of the method name and where a value would be placed, a colon is added in the name. Remember to keep this in mind when you're trying to override a method in your class's superclass. With that explained now, let's talk about how to get our application running. You have two main options here. Either run it in the simulator on your Mac, or run it on your device. To use the REPL, and just for the sake of simplicity during development, most iOS developers will run their app using the simulator, and they will less frequently run it on the device to make sure it feels right and is working correctly. If you do want to run on a device though, you will need to be a registered member of the iOS developer program, which is $99 a year. You will also need to be a member of this program to share your app with testers and to eventually submit it to the App Store. I won't be going into the specifics of how to set up your device to be ready to be deployed to, but there will be links in the show notes. But here is the two main rate tasks to run your application. Running just rake on its own will run your application in the simulator, while running rake device will install the application on your device and attempt to start it. If you want to run a specific device's simulator, such as an iPhone 6 Plus or an iPad Air, you can use the device name environment variable. Here is a current list of the different device names available to choose from. But if you want to see what's available to you, open up Xcode, go to the window menu, and select devices from the menu. You will see a list of all the simulator names, which are all valid values for this environment's variable. You're all ready to run the application now. For simplicity's sake, you're just going to use the default rake task to launch the default iOS simulator. Inside of your projects directory, in your terminal, simply run rake and wait for the app to compile and the simulator to start and launch your app. Once it's launched in the terminal, you will be given a REPL to work with. If you hold down the command key and click on a view inside your application, it will select it in the REPL. Try selecting the label and then changing its text property to see it update in the simulator live. As you can see, it now says Hello Jack 
without having to change the text in the code and then recompile and run again. This is incredibly handy for quickly testing out small changes, which you can then migrate back into your code once you're happy with them. That's all for, there is for episode one, Hello Ruby Motion. In this episode, you've come extremely far very quickly. You have learned the basics of working with UI views, the core of all UIs in iOS. You've also learned about Windows and the App Delegate, as well as RubyMotion's unique implementation of method names in comparison to other Ruby implementations. Finally, you've learned how to launch your application, as well as use the REPL to change it on the fly. This has been episode one of the RubyMotion for Rails developers course. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in episode two, Views and View Controllers. Yeah.